So, uh, speaking on the topic of elections, there was a pretty big, uh, pretty big bomb that was dropped a couple of weeks ago. Cenk Uger announced that he's running for California 25, the 25th district of California. Now, uh, and that was in after Katie Hill resigned after a scandal and everything. So I wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, whether or not you support his run and what kind of effect you think it could have if he is to win, what are his odds of winning, and just sort of give me your thoughts on that all around, especially because he's had such a, you know, sort of the dark past in a lot of ways. Uh, I just want to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, honestly, I, I gave money to the campaign. I gave money to Chang's campaign. Um, and it's not even that I think I'm, I'm like the biggest fucking Chenk fan or I think he's amazing or I think he's like this political genius or anything like that um, But to me just like we were having with the contra points conversation earlier um, It's it's a strategic decision. It's a utilitarian decision having Chenk in office and even just campaigning frankly um, As much as I disagree with him on issue X Y or fucking Z uh, is a net gain It's a net fucking gain and I feel like that um, there are more people on the left that need to have a come to Jesus moment and understand that, like, look, the leftist political space is not like, you know, your friend area. It's not the socialization zone. It's not a place. It's it's not, you know, uh, your safe space. It's not where everybody has to fucking agree with you on everything. We need to think about our moves and we need to think about who we're supporting and who we're not supporting. Um from a more utilitarian position like you know it, it doesn't need to be a perfect change it, nest, it just needs to be some you know alteration in the direction that we're trying to move in on the whole um and look you, you know the reason that i that i advocate for this type of thinking is this is the exact type of thinking the republicans have applied for several generations and look at all the ground that it's gained them over the past 30 or 40 years in terms of gerrymandered districts in terms of Citizens United, in terms of uh, the courts that uh, Trump has been able to pack over the course of his presidency, which is one of the few things he's actually been effective at, just sort of getting in federal judges, right-wing federal judges under the, uh, you know, um, help of, uh, and, you know, sort of tutelage, uh, tutelage is probably not the word I'm looking for, but with the help of Mitch McConnell. Um, you know, look at that race that's running in Mitch's district with that very blue dog Democrat um, woman who has some pretty right wing, you know, points of view. Um, even if we were to able, even if we were able to get her into office, it would be a net gain for as much as I disagree with her on many different things to have the top Republican out Mitch McConnell, who has effectively been, uh, you know, the grave digger of democracy who has undone all sorts of, you know, rules and stipulations and, uh, previously what were just, honor system understandings of how our democracy worked. He's fucking torn all that apart and ripped it all fucking apart. He does not give a fuck about process. Um, at the very least, as much as I may disagree with this person who's running against him, and I think she's running a kind of ineffective campaign, making it seem like, oh, I care more about what Trump wants to do than Mitch McConnell does. Uh, to have her in office as an ineffective senator, as basically a benign non-threat, who is basically probably not going to get much of anything done um, as a sometimes Democrat, sometimes Republican. Uh, it would be more effective to take out that later leadership and basically, you know, have somebody way less uh, or rather way more clueless than Mitch take up the position that Mitch is supposed to be in. Um, so I think at the end of the day, we need to think about our, you know, choices here. And we need to think about who we support and we need to think about the overall everything moving to the left it does not need to be perfect now i know that sounds like a bullshit you know incrementalism um argument but it's not i'm not saying that you need to uh sacrifice um you know the uh the good for the perfect uh what i'm saying is that in the context that you're currently in make the best choice and advocate for the best decision. You're not always going to have the ideal decision put in front of you. In fact, I would say that 99% of the time, you're never going to have the ideal decision put in front of you. Just take the best decision put in front of you and just have that be that, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, and, and I think that Chank is an example of what is the best decision offered to 
you know, the people in his district to, you know, whoever online can manage to just shell a few dollars to his campaign or whatever. Um, you know, Chenk for the left, you know, as far as mainstream politics, again, would be a net benefit, would be a net good. Um, you know, you, you know he'll at least get in there and advocate for something like Medicare for all, uh, which is like, again, just a baseline fucking thing that we should have. Uh, sure, I disagree with him on some issues of capitalism and a bunch of other stuff, but Jesus, like, you know, there's some very baseline functional policies and, uh, you know, le- bits of legislation that we should have that we just don't because we've allowed uh, money and politics to grease the wheels for too long and prevent actual change or progress on any of these fronts from happening. Um, Chenk would at least get us a little bit closer to creating the kind of change that we want to see in terms of, again, Medicare for all, money in politics, uh, and a host of other issues that you know he fights on that uh, I agree with him on.